Okay, are you guys ready for the main event tonight? All right. This guy has performed in over 22 different countries. He's performed for our troops overseas. He's a regular on the Las Vegas Strip and my personal favorite. Put your hands together, you guys, for Heath Harmison! I am live doing this on Facebook right now. Let's show Weston and the family what is here to support. Yeah. All these people are here to support you guys. We love you. Thank you so bad. Sorry you couldn't be here, but we're going to have a good time and raise a lot of money for you guys. Are we right? You going to get some money? Yes? All right. Awesome. All right, I'm going to go now. i got to do a show. Hold on. i got to stop this. There we go. All right, sure. Okay. Nothing like bringing down the energy completely to a low. Okay, you guys. I'm a professional. It's okay. Give it up for uh, my son Preston coming up here, starting off the show. Yes. Made him and uh, Austin did not make him, but give it up for Austin. Thank my God. Thank you guys so much for coming out. This is a great cause, and uh, I was more than happy to come and do this show uh, uh, for Little Weston. Uh, he deserves uh, the best that this world has to offer, and you guys, thank you so much for coming out and supporting him. This is, uh, this is amazing. Thank you. This is a Monday night, you guys. You guys are doing a good job. Thank you for coming. All right. So we just got through it, man. We got through the first like major hall. I mean, we got through Halloween, okay? The kids are still jacked upon candy. All right? At least my daughter is. She's, she's barely sitting there right now. Uh, then we got through uh, Thanksgiving. How's everybody feeling? <laughs> yeah. yeah, this shirt fit uh, a couple days ago. It's very tight now. Uh, I, <laughs> including the pants were actually baggy, and uh, all the turkey just you know, right in everywhere. <laughs> I, uh, Turk, it's, it's, uh, it was interesting. Anybody do the Black Friday? Anyone do Black Friday? <laughs> so, there's been some people that have killed some people in here. That's fantastic. I, uh, <laughs> people are crazy that do Black Friday, right? They're nuts. You gotta have a little crazy in you to be able to do this, okay? My mom's one of them, okay? She is crazy, all right? Uh, here's the thing, my, my mom, mom, she would have, have a group, group every year that she would take, take out, out, right? A group of ladies, because my, my mom, mom had all the schematics of the Walmarts, you know, just where everything's at, all right? And the night before, she'd bring everybody into the living room, right? She'd bring everybody, she gets the table right there, she's got the map, she's like, <laughs> All right, ladies, are you ready? Are you ready this year, Janet? Are you ready this year? Because you weren't ready last year, were you, Janet? No, you weren't! Washington girls, we saw her! We saw you, Janet! We saw you sitting there in the fetal position in aisle 18 last year. It's pathetic! Deborah, are you ready? Because you're a lead blocker, okay? I don't care if it's an old lady. I don't care if it's a child. You get them out of our way. Everybody gets their flat screens for their husbands. And everyone has a good year! Then she has a breakdown, all right? But the whole time, my grandma sitting there in the corner watching this whole thing go down. Just a dark corner. She's sitting there. She's just like... It was 1988. <laughs> Reagan was the president. <laughs> the toys that year were the Malibu Barbie, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and this magical box called the Nintendo. It was a nightmare. You remember your great Aunt Shannon? You remember her? No, you don't, because she's dead. She died on that day, 1988, Black Friday. So when I say you don't know what Black Friday is, you don't know what Black Friday is. <laughs> that was 
was her oxygen tank. She wasn't quitting. <laughs> it's grandma. I miss her. <laughs> oh, good times. So Black Friday, man. It's crazy. It's crazy stuff. I've been performing all over the place. I've uh, been doing a lot of cruise ships lately. Anyone ever been on a cruise before? Who's been on a cruise? Yeah. Um, they're fun. Uh, uh, I travel by myself, uh, so it's different. Uh, people are like, oh my gosh, you're living the dream. I'm like, yeah, if you go on vacation by yourself, right? That's just, it's, it gets lonely, right? And you got, I got to do things to pass the time, you know? So I like to mess with people, all right? I was in uh, Cosmo, Mexico recently, and I like to get, out my, get outside my comfort zone. So I got in the ocean, all right? Uh, which is terrifying, all right, for me, because I've seen Jaws, okay, things happen, all right? And I, I'm, I'm in the ocean, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm not okay in the ocean. I'm never okay because there's stuff in there, okay? <laughs> I'm walking in the water, right? I got my dad bought out, it's just hanging. And I'm, I'm, I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, so I'm walking, walking in the ocean, everything's great, feeling the sand. Then something hit me in the leg, right? That wasn't supposed to, like, it hit me in the leg. And then out of nowhere, I'm just like, and all the people on the beach are like, where's the lady dying in the ocean? Like, it was just me. It's like, it's okay, it's just me. It's just some seaweed, hit me in the leg, it's fine. It's all right. So I'm completely embarrassed. I'm so embarrassed. But then this big dude, big buff dude, we're talking jet, like no neck, you guys, just... Jack, shoulders are up to, like to his ears, like he is just huge, all right. And he comes, he comes into the water. He's wearing a speedo, so it's already uncomfortable for everybody, all right. <laughs> he gets, he gets about from from me to the end of the stage, okay. And I, uh, and he's yelling at his lady. She's scared uh, to get in the water because she thinks there's sharks in there too, right? So he's yelling at her. He's like, "Bat, bat, come on in here, bat." Come on, no, no sharks here, I'll punch you in the face. Come on in here, big boy. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm going to mess with this guy. All right, so I found the seaweed that scared me earlier. <laughs> I grabbed it and just tossed it at him. And I hit him right where the neck would be, like right here. <laughs> I'd never seen a man turn into a woman so fast. That guy ran on water. He was like, Aah! he was gone. But I'll tell you what, as soon as I threw that seaweed, I became like a Navy SEAL and was like, under the water. I was like, just did short breaths all the way down the beach. Because he would have murdered me, all right? I have a family. So it's fun stuff. I mentioned I got the dad bot, I got this. This is, this is listen, it's very pear-shaped under here. Uh, I take this off, it's like a biscuit scan, just poof, it's just like... Makes the same sound and everything. Just a <laughs> very pear shaped. Uh, <laughs> dad bod. Where, where are my dad bods? You got dad bods in the audience? Where's my dad bods at? Yeah. Can I own it. Wives pointing out their guys for him. That's nice. All the guys are like, shut up. Wear the plaid so it'll blend it all in. That's you, bro. Yeah, that's you. I got the <laughs> He's not happy about it. Um, you got to own the dad bot, guys. You got to own it. You know, this is the live show. I can see some of you are in denial. <laughs> okay, you need to own it. You got to own it. Ladies, if you're looking for a guy, look for the pre dad bot. Yeah, you know what a dad bot says? Stability. <laughs> Commitment. Yeah, you know what the ladies are thinking when I walk around with my shirt off? That guy drives a minivan, for sure. <laughs> Yeah, ladies, who wants to lay their head on a rock? Sure, rock hard abs look nice, but at the end of the day, when you've been working hard, what do you want? You want a Tempur-Pedic, right here, right? Forms right to your head. It's a beautiful thing. Some people think it's easy to have a dad. It's not easy, okay? You have to, like, there's a certain amount of working out, okay? I go to the gym, it's all chest, okay? No abs at all, because they don't exist, all right? So just forget it. And no, no leg, it's just straight up chest. And you have to watch your diet, all right? You have to make choices, you know? It's like, I'm gonna eat this double bacon cheeseburger, but later, I cannot eat the Hostess cream pie later. <laughs> See, the choices you have to make. So, heart attack or diabetes, which one do you wanna choose? 
It's up to you. It's up to you. Anyway, how's the top deck doing up there? You guys doing all right? Good for you guys. <laughs> nice. All right. So, uh, it's good, man. I've had the kids. Round of applause if you've had children in here. Who's had the kids in their lifetime? It's kids. Yeah. You guys should be more excited about it. <laughs> Some of you are like, I can't do it anymore. They take everything. My money, my energy, I can't do it anymore. That's what, you, that's what those claps were. I, it's like, I love being a dad, man. I got the son, he's 12 now. I got my daughter, she's 10, and I'm also hitting puberty, if you didn't hear that. Oh. <laughs> Cracking the voice. Uh, there, I love being a dad, I really do. Uh, my son, very funny kid, I, as you can see. Um, he loves sports, though. His favorite sport is football, all right? That is American football, all right? None of this crap, all right? <laughs> Real football, where they hit you, touchdowns, stuff like that. Where they actually hit, not like, <laughs> right in the ear, and it's like, ah! and like they're, you know? <laughs> Soccer, anyway. <laughs> Soccer's impressive. You gotta run a lot. You have to run so much. I don't do that. That's not okay. Football, it's like, whoop, stop. Hit. Anyway, it's fun to watch. So my son loves the football. Uh, before we moved to Las, we live in Las Vegas now. Before we moved there, uh, yeah, we got him into this school in Boise, and uh, he was. We got him there. He took a football, a real football, to take to play with his friends at the school, which is great. But a teacher stopped him. And she's like, <laughs> I'm sorry, young man. Um, you can't play with that ball here. That ball has a pointy end, and it might hurt the other kids. I'm like, what? It's a football, lady. She's like, also, sir, we don't allow baseballs either. Okay, those things are hard, and they can hurt the other kids. I'm like, do you have any other stupid stuff to tell us? She's like, actually, since you asked, okay. Uh, when it snows, we don't allow the kids to make balls out of the snow because we're worried that they might throw them at each other. I'm like, oh, that's what you do with the snowball. You throw them at people. Round of applause if you had epic snowball fights when you were a kid. Yeah. Right? They were great, man. They were great. I grew up in the late 80s, early 90s. We had epic snowball fights. You'd be sitting in class and you'd see a little snow come down. You're like, yes. You're thinking about all the people you're just going to drill, you know? It's awesome. We had, epic snow. we had one rule, though. You couldn't cross the line. That was it. You couldn't cross the line. Or you get that perfect snowball, you dunk it in water, get all hard, you know what I mean? <laughs> it was the 80s, kids could take it, all right? Morningside Mustangs, we tore it up. Yeah, we did. Built forts, stuff. So, you get a snowball, see your best friend across the field, you're like, <laughs> and then bam, hits him right in the face. His nose is bleeding, he's crying, but did he hate you? No, he respected you for it. <laughs> kids were tough, man. They're not tough anymore. Kids aren't tough, they're not tough. I, mean, I know what you might be thinking, my kids tough. No, they're not little wieners, all right? They're not tough, all right? right? It's not their fault, right? They're, it's not their fault. They're just getting rid of all the stuff that makes kids tough anymore. For example, you know what they got rid of on the playground? The merry-go-round. You guys remember the merry-go-round? <laughs> they would mess you up, huh? Yeah. They got rid of that because of how we got on it, all right? Because you didn't just get on the thing, one foot on, one foot off, grab on that bar. Another little kid named Timmy, just straddling the inside bar, ready for the ride with hope. <laughs> You're like, all right, Timmy, you ready? Here we go! <laughs> this is fun, isn't it, Timmy? Is it? No, that's not how you did it. How did you get on that thing? You're like... <laughs> <laughs> you were flying! Yeah? <laughs> Zero to 60 in .2 seconds. You were gone! Yeah, Timmy's just racking himself on that bar, just like, Wah! vomiting, Wah! just a spray of vomit. It was, like, it was awesome. I love that thing, but you didn't get near it at full velocity. Like, when that was really going, it's like, it hurt. That one idiot kid that would try to just latch on, and if you were too close, his feet would kick you in the head, and then you would see it launch him across the playground. And he'd skip across the pavement like a skipping rock. The pavement, remember the pavement? Mess you up! It's either pavement, gravel, or shards of wood, those big shards. They'd bail you. 
He wore shorts that day. You got slippers in places you don't want mom to see. <laughs> She's like, let me see. <laughs> you hate it, man. You got hurt on the playground when I was a kid. You learned from it. You got hurt, it's like, won't do that again. Or you did, because you're an idiot. <laughs> Good, man. Took my kids to the playground. Now, step on the playground. <laughs> the heck is this? Is that, is that padding? Did I get a learning thing from the padding? On the monkey bars, it's like, yay, they fall. Oh, that was fun. That's stupid. <laughs> Didn't learn anything from the padding? <laughs> then they got rid of the good slides, the metal ones. <laughs> Summertime was fantastic. <laughs> Third degree burns. Just, <laughs> just trying to ride that whole thing on your butt cheeks when there was cloth. You're just like, oh, okay. And some of the slides did the dips, right? So the dips are like, shout! And like, it still burned. <laughs> some of those slides were ridiculously way too tall, though, right? They had some of those. And there was one way up the skinny ladder, right? You get up, go up to the top. <laughs> So tall, the wind changed. You're like, oh, God. You couldn't go back down because the whole line of kids like, let's go, you pants like, <laughs> But it was totally safe because it had that little half inch siding on both sides that kept you running. <laughs> yeah, one strong breeze and poof, you were done. A broken arm, femur. Uh, then they got rid of the good swings. The big ones, those big swings, the ones that will send you to the moon. Like, the big, the big swings. Yeah, you don't even know. You don't even know, man. I wish you knew. <laughs> had so many memories. Candy Cane Park. My school had huge, Morningside had heat. Oh, it was so awesome. I love the swing. My mom was the best swing pusher, though. She loved me. <laughs> she took care of you, right? Every push was love. Right? She's like, I love you. I missed you. I love you. My dad would try and wrap me around the top pole if he could, right? He's like, we got insurance today. Let's do this. <laughs> dad, my dad did the underdog. You guys know what that is? That's what we call it? All right? The underdog, all right, is when dad is pushing you, right? Dad's pushing you. Then dad goes through you, okay? He goes through. But right here at the top, dad does a little flick. You know what the flick does? Kinks both the chains, okay? So when you come back down, it drops you, all right? If you live through a day of dad pushing you on the swing, you felt alive that day. <laughs> Just happened to be alive. They had some dangerous toys, but you know the backyard swing set? You know the ones that you get? The ones that always ended up lopsided at some point? <laughs> Grandma's always just like, let's get on. You get in the little basket one with the two-seater. That's not safe. She's like, let's do it. I'm like, ah! And the whole thing's just going. <laughs> one leg is just holding on in the air. <laughs> Boom! You're like, ah! Right? So. Just me. <laughs> Grandma was awesome. <laughs> That swing set was not safe. <laughs> oh. A lot of things are changing though for kids. The biggest thing I think changing is kids organize sports. That's what's really changed for kids. I mean, I grew up, like I said, grew up in the late 80s, early 90s, not, not a terribly long time ago. But sports for kids has changed since I played. I mean, <laughs> we did crazy stuff in the 80s, you guys. Yeah, we kept score. <laughs> yeah, which, which, yeah. Which, which is completely unheard of now, right? Because you don't want to hurt the kids' feelings! They lose! Right? Because everyone's a winner. Right, guys? It's real life, isn't it? No. No, I've been to Walmart. We're not all winners out there, guys, all right? <laughs> you see the pajama people at Walmart? You've seen the pajama people. If you don't know who it is, it's you, okay? It's you. I went to Walmart while I was here. Good luck peeing, sir. That's the grandfather right there. Grandpa, give him a hand. Got to go to the bathroom. Sit in the front row. You got to point him out, right? You don't get up either. I'll point you out too. <laughs> oh, man. Where was I? Oh, yeah. I keep the score. I'm not going to get on a whole pedestal about this issue, though. I mean, here's the thing. I'm done with the participation trophies, though. Like, trophy, trophy. We barely got trophies when we won. In the, we got the ribbon. 
Yeah, first place was blue, second place was red, third place, I don't know, nobody gave a crap about third place. What's that? <laughs> you can't see her face, but it was like, it was white. <laughs> Just a bunch of white ribbons on my house. It's terrible. <laughs> Third place is. <laughs> it's funny. No, we got bigger problems with kids' sports now. The treats. You guys remember the treat parent at the end of the game? In the 80s, we got awesome treats. Right? We got like Mountain Dew or Surge. You remember Surge? <laughs> right? Or Jolt Cola. Remember Jolt? Five times the caffeine. That stuff would jack you up, man. It was pure sugar and caffeine. It was awesome. You got some sort of cupcake with it? Nothing healthy. <laughs> you had to do another activity after the activity after the treat just so you wouldn't get diabetes. You had to work it off immediately, all right? Yeah, but you can't get away with treats like that now, can you? No. Because something magically in the last few years called gluten came out and ruined everything. <laughs> gluten issues? We didn't have gluten issues in the 80s. We just dealt with the diarrhea. You know what I mean? <laughs> right? Just dealt with it. If you got a tummy ache or if you got a scrape on your knee, your dad or your grandpa will make rub some dirt in it. Eat the dirt. You remember the dirt man? Dirt fixed everything in the 80s. Right? You'd be sitting there with a broken leg just dangling there. <laughs> your dad or your grandpa will make rub some dirt in it, walk it off. Walk it off! You can't say walk it off anymore. That's child abuse. <laughs> yeah, learn that one the hard way. <laughs> can't do that. Can't say it. Thing is, kids, they don't see the crappy side of kids' sports, all right? They just play the sport, eat the treat, take the nap, that's their day. That's all they do. They don't see the crappy side, which is what the parents have to deal with, which is dealing with the other parents, right? Now, here's the thing. Most of the parents are pretty cool, except for that one. Yeah, her name is Meredith. <laughs> and she's the worst, okay? This is the lady that brings water and celery for a treat, all right? Water's not a treat, all right? Celery sucks. <laughs> All right, you can't even put peanut butter on it because there's a nut allergy kid on the team, all right? <laughs> a peanut allergy? What are we doing to our kids, man? That didn't exist in the 80s. It wasn't a thing, was it? It didn't exist. All right, I get it. It's a thing now. It's very serious. My son deals with the allergies. All I'm saying is, it's not the zombie apocalypse taking us out. It's the peanut allergy, so watch out, all right? But the point is, Meredith's the worst, all right? But I'm going to be the hero because I'm the treat parent after Meredith. I didn't go crazy, guys, I got Gatorade. I got the red and blue kinds, they're the best. Yellow sucks, because when you're a kid, it might be pee, you don't know. <laughs> Speaking of pee, how did it go? <laughs> hey, good. 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 <laughs> he just, <laughs> yeah, he'll take it. That was so funny, he just clapped like he was done at a blackjack team. <laughs> 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 We're good. So the Gatorade, uh, yellow sucks. Um, so I didn't do that, kids. I got the red book guy. Then I got cupcakes. I don't give a crap. That's right. I got the Hostess cupcakes. The swirly on top, creamy filling in the middle. You guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah. yeah. Best kind of cupcake. Hear up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the puberty again, just <laughs> right there. <laughs> So I got the treats, we go to the game, we win, all right? Kept scoring my own head, because that's what we do as parents, all right? We keep score, because we care, all right? But I'm the parent that voices that we won. I made a winner flag out of our bed sheets at home, my wife's still mad. <laughs> but I'm sitting there like, woo, we won, <laughs> woo! Right, and Meredith, she's like, we don't keep score here. And he's like, shut up, Meredith, woo! Like, I'm excited, the kids are excited. She's like, where's the tree pair? And I'm like, guys, over here. They come over, they get the Gatorade, they get their cupcakes, they're jacked upon sugar, run all over. They carry me on their shoulders, all right? <laughs> we're 10, 10 years old. Kira, it was beautiful. It's like reverse Rudy. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah. They're chanting my name, Mr. Harmison, Mr. It was beautiful, I'm crying. And then that witch, Meredith, ruined everything. She comes up to us, she's like, <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Harmison. Apparently, you didn't get the memo, okay? We have gluten issues on this team, mister. All right, and my son Timmy has a peanut allergy. He's a peanut, he will die. I'm like, well, Meredith, your son scored a goal for the other team. I be doing this team a favor! <laughs> you 
Back off me, Meredith! All right, Tom, you gonna talk to your wife here? What? Oh, apparently both men in the family have a nut allergy, and they're in your purse! Sorry, I blacked out what happened. <laughs> Round of applause if you've ever had a Meredith in your life. You ever have one of these people? Yeah? All right. Listen, if you're not clapping or saying yes right now, you are Meredith, all right? Light it up, man. Yeah. <laughs> all right. I need to take a drink. I've been yelling a lot. But I need to... I, I, I gotta take a drink, but uh, I like to keep the energy flowing throughout the show. So every time I take a drink, you guys give me a huge round of applause like it said something possible. Okay, let's test it out. Here we go. Very nice. Thank you. Oh, I think I need to paint the picture a little more. Um, so there's all different kinds of crazy parents out there, right? If you've had kids in sports, uh, you know, if you have a, a, a dance, theater, if you're dealing with other kids and their parents, You've seen crazy, okay? You've seen all the kinds of crazy, all right? There's different kinds. So I'm gonna do uh, an impression of three different kinds of parents at a regular game, all right? Now, first, Meredith. I'm gonna do an impression of Meredith at a game, all right? Then I'm gonna do uh, an impression of myself. Now, I'm more passionate than anything. I'm just there to support my kid and their team, but I'm loud about it, but I'm harmless, okay? <laughs> then there's Stan. Stan is a crazy person. He should be in prison, okay? <laughs> so <laughs> But first, uh, Meredith. Here we go. <clears throat> That actually happened, all right? That is, that happened. Lady freaked out over sunscreen, all right? Yeah. All right, then there's me, I'm more passionate, but harmless, okay? Then there's Stan, all right? Hey, 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 hey! You break his legs! John! Break him! Get the ship we made! Get him to the back, please! Oh, shut up, coach, you're an idiot! True story. He didn't say the shiv part, but he did call the coach an idiot, and the coach beat the crap out of him. It was awesome! <laughs> yep. Yep. Don't mess the refs and coach too much, okay? Because they'll snap. <laughs> I've seen it. My dad's been coaching softball for I don't know how many years, okay? He coached Eric, you know, he coached everybody. Eric, you coach. I mean, I've seen the most awesome things watching my sister play softball, and it had nothing to do with the players. <laughs> my dad coaching third base. Right? You know this. Dad's coached third base. All right. Ground ball, just boom, right toward his way, tries to stop it with his foot, goes Rup! Dad drops to the ground. Fetal position. Never had another brother or sister. Never again. He was done. He was done that day. That's right! Erica, Erica goes on. Uh, he said, what did she say? She said something. It was something, how are your boys, coach? Something like that. It was, she said something. <laughs> and he's like, ah, we're good. <laughs> I was doubled over laughing. <laughs> oh, until it happened to me. And then uh, it was over. <laughs> I'll tell you that story later. Um, oh, my gosh. <sighs> Man, I'm winded. I'm in no better shape after the yelling. Um, Man, but being a parent though, it's it's interesting, man. It, it especially having one of each. You got a boy and a girl comes to challenges like potty training. Who's potty training here? <laughs> sorry, sorry, I said that wrong. I'm, I'm worried though. The only one to clap was my brother-in-law. <laughs> He's like, that's me. 
Paddock train over here. The rest of you are like, I've peed twice since I've been sitting here. Paid $15 for these tickets. I'm not getting up. Well, let me know your, your potty train. I, uh... <laughs> no, potty train. Who has potty trained a human in here? Potty trained a human being. Round of applause. Uh, now, I say human because it's different than pets. Okay? Got good friends of mine that ha don't have kids, but they have pets. And those pets are their kids. You guys know these people? Okay. Are there any in here? <laughs> what, do you, what do you have? A what? A half pit? What's the other half? <laughs> it's like, pit's the only one that matters. What? German shepherds matter too, okay? Uh, <laughs> stupid. All right. Um, <laughs> you can... Your guys' butt cheeks made a sound just now, and it hit me in the face, just like that, and it was weird. Anyway, so Ger German Shepherd Pitbull. All right, anyone else got a pet that's their kid? Yeah? <laughs> What's that? What do you have? I, someone just put your hand down for you. Okay, nobody wants to talk to me. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna be the butt of your joke. Do it. It's okay. Now, here's the thing. I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. Unless you don't have a cat. Any cat people in here? <laughs> don't scream too loud. Something will out. You know what I mean? You don't want to. Cat people. It happens. Can't help it. The damner. You know, it's just everywhere. It's <laughs> like no, it's hairless. It's fine. It's just, I hate cats. I hate them so much. They. Uh, it's not. It's not all. It's not. It's all cats. But like I. <laughs> But it's because of one demon cat we used to have, all right? My sister on the, his name was Lloyd, okay? I named him after Dumb and Dumber Lloyd, and that was a mistake, okay? <laughs> Lloyd would, I had a bedroom, right? I had a bed on one side of my room. It was a longer bedroom, had a bed, and then my door was on the other side with my light switch. Lloyd would wait under my bed for my bare feet, okay? He just sat there waiting, and then when I came, <laughs> it hurt, like it would, sorry, screwed in the mic. Right, it hurts! So he's sitting there waiting, so I'd have to flip the switch in the dark, run to my bed, count the steps, jump, and hit the bed so that Lloyd would not get my feet. Well, one night, I undercalculated my steps, all right? I flipped, I flipped the switch, hit the ground, hit the floorboard of my bed, bam, with my face, and there's Lloyd. Right in the face. It's like all so I hate cats. <laughs> so whether you got a cat or a dog, all right, just don't compare your pet to my daughter. I don't care if you're both dragging your butt across the carpet at the barbecue, all right? <laughs> when I potty train my kid, I don't send him buck naked outside and be like, go! Don't pee on the electric, but okay, well, you'll learn. That's electricity, get in the house, no. Potty training is different from boys to girls, right? Because one day the boy needs to learn to pee standing up and hopefully your girl doesn't, that'd be weird. Right. It's actually telling this joke at another show, and a lady in the audience yelled out at me. She's like, Cheerios! I'm like, Cheerios? For Target! You drown the Cheerios! I'm like, lady, you need a bigger cereal! All right. I can't even hit Cheerios, man. What am I, a sniper? Come on! Cheerios? Give him something to hit. Give him a frosted mini wheat, a pot tart, a waffle! <laughs> Build up to the Cheerio. Give the kid a chance. Some of the older guys in here are like, I can hit 20 Cheerios at the same time. I got the spread action going on. <laughs> Being changes when you get older, man. There's four streams. Yeah, first one's all willy-nilly, goes everywhere. You have no idea where that one's going. The other two are fairly accurate. And the fourth one, that one doesn't even come alive till you put it back in your pants and it ruins your khakis. Right? <laughs> well, you don't see a lot of older guys with shorts and flip-flops, do you? No, because that's a bad day. You know what I mean? It's just... <laughs> Dark socks and Birkenstocks. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> so I got my son hitting it like 85% of the time, so I figure my job's done, he's potty trained, all right? And when Preston was younger, he would not close the bathroom door when he went to the bathroom, all right? He didn't care, he's like, you're gonna be a weirdo and watch what's going on in here, all right? That's on you, all right? But I'm gonna do my business, all right? One day I was walking by the bathroom, Preston was going pee, and uh, this is what I see. <laughs> now 
that's when we found out our shower curtain smelled like urine, so that was fun. He, was, he had terrible aim. He had terrible aim. Uh, still has terrible aim. Uh, yeah. It's good stuff. Being a parent's fun. I did, however, uh, something happened recently I wasn't prepared for. Uh, my wife called me on the phone. She's like, um, you need to have a talk with your son. I'm like, what happened? She's like, nothing. He just asked me questions I feel like you as a father need to answer. I'm like, what kind of questions? She's like, you need to give him the talk. I'm like, what? At 10? Already? I thought that was early. I guess with the internet and stuff, kids are just learning things sooner. Okay, but I am not prepared for this, okay? But I do need to ask. Round of applause if you got the talk when you were a kid. <laughs> Ten of you. We sold 350 seats. Ten of you know what you're doing. <laughs> that is fantastic. Okay. Okay, round of applause if you've given the talk. Who's given the talk in here? <laughs> That's a problem. There's a lot more claps. Which means there's a lot of people that never got the talk now giving the talk. It's a big misinformation program happening. That's okay though, I didn't really get the talk either. Because to this day, not kidding you, my dad cannot buy toilet paper from the grocery store. He won't do it. Never seen him buy toilet paper. He will not do it. He won't do it. If you know my dad, you, he will not buy toilet paper. Never seen him do it. All right? So he made me, and also when, you know, you had a sister and stuff, and you sent a 16 year old to the store to deal with the lady problems, that is not okay. <laughs> First off, ladies, if you see a 16-year-old boy in a fetal position in that aisle at the store, help him! <laughs> sit there and laugh. It's like, <laughs> hope it's not a heavy day. All right. It's, <laughs> it's terrible to do that to a 16-year-old. My dad went by toilet paper, so my mom, she tried to make him give me the talk. <laughs> and this is how it went down. All right, my dad comes walking into the room. He's like, Your mom. <laughs> Your mom says I come out. Your mom says I gotta talk, 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 talk to you, talk to you about stuff. Yeah. Come on, Brian, you can do this. You know when? Oh, if you were to take, if you, if you take, if you take, if you put your, if you, um. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Listen. All right. Listen. You're 13 years old. All right. All you need to know at this point is if that comes out of its pants, it comes off. You understand? Not gonna be a grandfather when you're 16. And then he left the room! That was it! <laughs> now I'm just running around scared my dad's gonna call my wiener. It's terrible. <laughs> so that's the talk my son got. So it's worked. <laughs> it was good. It's oh, great stuff. Have you guys had, are you guys having a good time so far? Are you guys doing the show? So how's it going? Yeah. Oh my gosh. What's that? <laughs> I don't have it ready and my body's not ready. And uh, that, that takes a lot of preparation, stretching. It's not a good idea. I don't. There's children here. They don't need to see. I'm glad you agree. <laughs> so um, I've got a few more jokes I'm going to tell you, but <clears throat> before I get to those, um, I do want to mention uh, that there's, there's a couple things I'm going to sell at the end of the show. and uh, I'm going to be donating a portion of the sales I get from all this to Weston and his family, okay? So if you want to get this. Now, I'm pretty passionate about this anti-Meredith movement uh, that I have going. I've uh, been spreading it all across the world. And uh, basically, I've made shirts 
that you can get. Uh, it just says, shut up, Meredith. All right, you can wear these at your kids' games, your grandkids' games, uh, their dance recitals, the store. You can wear this anywhere, all right? This is 100% uh, cotton, and uh, that's my face on there. You're probably wondering, Heath, why is your face on there? Because I want her to know it's coming from me. All right, Meredith needs to be quiet. Okay, then I got some hashtags on here. Uh, don't be a Meredith, celery sucks. Cupcake parent, keep score in my website. So if anybody gives you any problems, you send them to me. Okay, I'll take care of them. Thank you. <clears throat> so you can get that after the show as well. I'll be in the. I'll be out there while you guys are, uh, you know, leaving and getting ready to hopefully win uh, your awesome uh, auction items. There are some great items, right? There's some pretty cool stuff in there. Let's give a round of applause to all the businesses, everybody who's donated. That is incredible. Yes, 100% of all that money is going straight to the family. So make sure you guys, uh, well, you already put in all your bids. So hopefully you guys spent your money, okay? Uh, if you buy one of these, I'll know that you didn't spend enough. Or just, uh, or buy all my shirts. That'll work too. Uh, a portion goes to Weston and a portion goes to my kids because they're hungry and they need to eat. All right, so. <clears throat> so, all right, so... Here's, a, here's one that's, uh, I, I've been working on this one, because uh, it's a true story, okay? A couple of true stories that happened. I used to be a whitewater rafting guide. Round of applause if you've been whitewater rafting before. You know <laughs> Rafting's awesome, man. I worked uh, here, to when I did the Hagerman stretch, right? Did the uh, Murtaugh stretch, which is you know, pretty intense river, right? But I did a lot of the Hagerman, right? It's a nine mile stretch of river. And uh, I started when I was 16. Uh, I was a lackey pumping up boats and stuff like that. And then when I was 18, got my whitewater rafting guide license and I uh, was able to take people down the river. Now, <clears throat> uh, my first official uh, lead boatman trip, okay? It was my first uh, trip and uh, we took down this corporate trip. There was eight people, all right? It was a private trip um, and for this company and I was supposed to give the whole safety talk and everything to this group, okay? Now this, um, how do I put this delicately? Uh, this trip, um, was the heaviest trip <laughs> that I've taken down. The, they, were, they were big, okay? That, nobody was under 300 pounds. Eight people, all right? Eight people times 300, how much weight is that? That's a butt ton, all right? That's a lot of weight, all right? So <laughs> I'm getting ready to do this talk, all right? The, the, uh, the safety talk, the, uh, the boss of this company, uh, his name was Richard, okay? And he had been uh, drinking quite a bit. He was intoxicated, and uh, which was not good. All right, my, I'm like, is this okay? The, bo the boss is like, it's fine. It's a private trip. He'll be okay. He'll be fine. I'm like, will I? Though, you know, like, so I start giving the talk. All right, there's Trisha over here. That's his wife, Trisha, and uh, she's she's over here, and I, and and he's just not listening. Okay, he's not listening, and I'm I'm giving the talk. So first of all, I'm like, all right, guys, listen up. Okay. I'm Heath, I'll be your whitewater rafting guide. Okay, it's gonna get exciting. This is your paddle, okay? This is your paddle. This is the T part. You grab onto the T, you grab onto the, the, this part. This is the blade paddle part. That goes in the water, okay? That goes in the water, not up here. That is air. We don't go anywhere if you go, you are my engine. I need you to be in the water, use it, get into it, okay, guys? You gotta do, you gotta put, all right? Richard, are you listening? Richard, stop licking. The paddle, it is not allowed. Richard! Right here! Trish, can you get your husband? Okay, listen, now this is your life jacket, you guys. It's very important. You fall in, this is gonna keep you afloat, all right? Now, if you fall into the river, please do not fall in the river. I don't know if I'll get you in the raft, okay? <laughs> your life jacket. If you go in the river, what will happen? I will do it. Dunk you three times, first time, for being an idiot, okay? Falling in, all right? Second time for momentum. Third time, I will pull you up, all right? On top of me for momentum. Please don't fall out, all right? Just don't. But when I go, if you're in the water, you get next to the raft, and you grab the rope on the side of the raft, you will pull up and help me, and you, we'll use the moment, and I'll get you, okay? Richard, did you get all that? Throw up and then come back, all right? Okay, this is the last part. This is the rope bag. This is very important. There is a hundred feet of rope in this bag. If you get away from the raft and fall in the water, all right, I will throw this like a football. You will catch it like a football. You will grab the bag, then grab the rope. Do not hold on to the bag 
there's a hundred feet in there, and if I have to pull you in a hundred feet, I will be very upset. Richard! Wake up! This guy was terrible. Trisha, please! Any questions? Trisha, where do we keep the sandwiches? Come on! Trish, this is true. All right, so we get in the raft. Everybody gets in the raft. We get in the water. The raft goes... <laughs> <laughs> we immediately start losing the, the air in the raft, all right? I'm like, we're, good. we're in, we're going, all right? So I've got the big oars, okay? I'm like, everybody paddle together, okay? We're going to paddle in the water. They're all just like, <laughs> I'm like, in the water. You're a bigger target. You're going out the boat. <laughs> so we go to, there's five sets of rapids, right? There's five different classes, all right? Five is like waterfall. One is like, you know, the, uh, you go to Roaring Springs and go into the little Relisa River, right? And so, you know, well, this was basically, you know, the, it was a pretty uh, solid year. So it was, you know, like threes, you know, upper threes, maybe lower four, maybe at most. Right, so the first set we go through, they're all paddling the air, and I'm just trying to get us through. I'm like, paddle the water! You know, screaming. And then, oh, the second set. You guys, I hit this hole perfectly. I just, boom! I hit it. I, I just. Ugh! So we lost so much air out of the boat that the boat tacoed. <laughs> I hit it. The boat goes. Poof, and then it snapped back. Where did the energy go? Under my anus. All right, go straight up. My butt. I get shot in the air, Superman style. The oar sticks straight up. I come down on my baby makers. Onto. The or now I'm immediately my dad on that softball field in the fetal position trying not to throw up right I'm seeing I can't see I can't there's just dots everywhere I'm just I think I'm dying right I'm just like dad, paddle, paddle, paddle. and then finally I come to right I come to I can start seeing things and I start counting the people Seven. Where's Richard? <laughs> Richard's out in the water. <laughs> like, I hate you. And he's out there. I'm like. <laughs> so then I start feeling cantaloupes between my legs. You know what I'm saying? Anyway. It's very uncomfortable. I look like I just got off a horse. All right. I got my. I get this rope back. I throw the back. I'm like, all right, Richard, I contact. And I just. Aaron Rodgers, right? Just, well, not this year so much, but like, it, right? Hits Richard right in the face. His nose is bleeding. I'm like, yes, right? Richard grabs the bag, and what does he do? He holds on to the bag. Richard goes out 100 feet. Now I gotta pull in Moby Dick 100 feet, guys. I had to muster the energy and the strength to pull this guy 100 feet against the current. We're still going through stuff. This is happening. I have to be a hero today. So I'm, I'm like, ah, ah, paddle, Trisha, paddle. She's just eating her Subway sandwich. Like, I'm like, oh, you trash. And I'm like, oh, my God. And I get Richard right on the side of the boat. I'm like, I hate you so much. All right, Richard, here we go. All right, we're going to go. I'm going to duck you once because you're an idiot. And I hate you so much. And I get two, I'm gonna go, Richard, you're gonna help me, okay? You're gonna pull up, right? So I go, one, duck, two, duck, three, yeah, Richard! Here's Richard. Like that was... So I am not getting Richard in the boat. It does not happen. I'm like, point your toes, we'll see you at the next beach. I took a risk, but it turned out okay. True story. Oh, I'm like exhausted from just telling the story. Imagine the actual event. <laughs> so then the second trip we took down is actually a pretty crazy trip. Uh, we took down the deaf and blind kids down the Hagerman River, right? Yes, not kidding. True story. I did not believe my boss when he told me. He's like, we're gonna take down the deaf and blind kids. I'm like, excuse me? Is that safe? He's like, yeah, we do it every year. It'll be fine. I'm like, okay. Then I get my group, right? We, the boat isn't in the water yet. And so the blind kids are going around the raft, right? Just feeling out the raft. 
right? It was pretty cool. By the time they went around the whole rap call, all the forts, all the stuff, it was this blanket just <laughs> across. I'm like, this is awesome, right? The blanket, the deaf kids are ready to go. I had a deaf interpreter lady that was in the front of the boat interpreting for the deaf kids, doing paddling and stuff. So she was helping out, all right? So this is a great trip. I'm like, all right, let's do this, right? I'm doing the paddling. We get through the first set, everything's good. And then the second set, something terrible happened again. <laughs> I lost the interpreter lady <laughs> out of the boat. <laughs> the deaf kid's freaking out. It's like, ah! that, that, that was just the sound, okay? I'm not making fun. And the, the blind kids, they're just like, Woo! like they didn't give crap, man. They're at the time of their life. But the deaf interpreter lady, her brain, she's freaking out. She's freaking, she's scared. She, her brain does not connect that she can speak. She's signing to me from the water. She's like, it's this, help me. I take it as thumbs up, I'm okay. So I'm like, point your toes. No, I saved her that day, I got her. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> True story, man. Just crazy stuff happens. Alright, I'm about done. <sighs> Need another drink though. And then uh, then I'm gonna talk, say a couple things and then we'll be out of here. Right. So <clears throat> along with the uh, t-shirt, I'll also be selling a DVD as well. Uh, that's a DVD. Alright, you watch it on your television. It's TV, DVD, television. You guys, I have to say that. No matter how smart I think the crowd is, there's always one person that fails me. All right, they call me or email me. It doesn't work in my car! You have a DVD player in your car? It doesn't work. I can't help you, man. All right, it's DVD. so it's a DVD. You watch it. It's called Raising Insanity. Uh, Preston is on here as well. Uh, he does about 10 minutes of stand-up comedy, some different stuff than he did tonight. He was a little younger, too, so uh, the, the cute factor is really involved in this one, right? <laughs> so, by the way, uh, the burn about the, uh, the phase one and two thing with the chunk fit, it's not cool. Preston, where are you? My, he was ripping on me! Did you not hear? My lazy eye? That's true. Found that out. <laughs> Fifth grade, picture day. That's when I found out I had a lazy eye. <laughs> My mom burned all those pictures. You can't even find them anymore. But I'm smart. Yeah, because she lied to me. She said you couldn't notice. Then my grandma told the truth. It's like, honey, what's wrong with your eye? <laughs> and then that picture did not make it to the refrigerator. Okay, that year. With all the other grandkids. Do you want to see it? I don't know if you can see it from where you're at, but this eye is looking at my brother-in-law. The other one's looking at the mezzanine people up there. So that's my lazy eye. So, so Preston's all worried about. Anyways, to DVD and uh, very fun. Again, I'm donating a portion of the proceeds to Weston and uh, the rest of the kids. Okay, so <clears throat> all right. So what do I want to end off? I think I'm gonna end off. Oh, first off, I want to thank, again, okay, first, thank you guys, this is a Monday night, thank you guys so much for coming out to this show and supporting Weston, and uh, uh, thank you for all the people that donated your time, thank the Orpheum Theater, give them Orpheum Theater a round of applause for giving, you know, letting us come here in their space on a Monday, it's very nice of them. Um, you know, the bike store doing that and uh, doing the, the, the whole auction thing over there. All the people that donated the auction items, they got some amazing items over there. Uh, I thank my mom for putting this whole thing together. Give uh, Lynn Harmison a round of applause. She, she, she did above and beyond uh, what I thought was going to happen tonight. To be honest, I, I, I didn't think, that, like, this is crazy. Like, I, I was not expecting this. And I don't think the family was. Um, You know, uh, I have kids myself, and uh, I can't imagine what the family's dealing with going through this. And it's very hard um, to even just watch. And the, the Lees are uh, uh, very good friends of our family. They're family to our family. Um, you know, this kid is, uh, he's a hero, man. This kid's uh, a fighter, and uh, I have no 
I have no doubt he's going to be living the rest of his life and just uh, crushing whatever he decides to do uh, because he's got a great family and friends behind him. So thank you so much for um, that support. Um, now I got to get professional and uh, stop this and uh, bring back the party. Here we go. Yeah. All right. I'm getting home. <laughs> okay, here we go. All right. <clears throat> so uh, I can, I'm just going to get rid of it. You guys, uh, I need to ask. Round of applause uh, if you have ever taken your kids on a long road trip. Has anyone ever done this? Right. This is the worst. This is the worst possible scenario for a parent, right? This is not a vacation. We took our kids all the way from Las Vegas to Washington, D.C. and back, okay? It was not, was not my idea. Well, it's like, we'll come closer and love each other. I'm like, I will leave them in Kansas. <laughs> There's corn, they'll be fine. <laughs> but a nice farming family, they'll learn work. But we didn't. Uh, what, I did, uh, what I did learn, though, on this trip, what needs to come in a minivan is that window that rolls up like in a limo. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> the partition window. So when you go on these long road trips with your kids, you just roll that baby up and let whatever's gonna happen, happen in the back of the van. You have peace the whole way to your destination, then you just deal with whatever happens when you get there. All right, just to prove this, I recorded my kids arguing in the back of the car and added this feature just so you guys could see what it'd be like. Go ahead and play it for me. Crank it up. This is what's happening in the back of the car. And that's how it goes down, you guys. My name's Tina Armisen. Thank you guys so much for coming out. Have a good night. Thank you. Keith Harmison, everybody. Oh. Babe, babe, uh, they want you to come back out here. <laughs> Mom! <laughs> mom! Mom! Mommy! <laughs> there she is. Come on, give her a round of applause. You gotta take the microphone if you're gonna talk. It didn't help for you to start off the way you started out there. Okay. Just as bad as your dad. Please forgive me. I just want to. <clears throat> easy, right? I just want to be able to, um, on behalf of Erica and Todd and Weston, you have no idea how much you mean to them. What well, you've done for for our family and to bring us out within the community is amazing. And Heath and Molly and all you guys just coming together and what everybody in the community's done for us and and. You know, we appreciate each and every one of you and all that you've done for us. And I know that if we can 
if we can stand together and work hard and pray for Weston, and he's doing better. He's doing better. And Eric and Todd have a positive as, attitude, as do we. And, you know, we've never been through anything like this, but I know if we all stay together and we work hard, and he's going to be well. I know he will be well. Um, we just have too, too much support for him not to be, you know, but the, the time that you've, you know, I was talking to Brian outside and uh, um, just tell him how much I appreciate him and stuff and that um, he gets you back. And he's excited about that, just so you know that, because you, you have been busy. You have been busy. And everybody knows that the time that you've spent walking around and, and you know, every, every night, every evening, we hear from you. And you're out visiting these people and, and you just, you know that we love you. I mean, your family, you always have been, and um, uh, nobody else, nobody else in the community could have done what you've done. And it's just it's turned out, and it's, it's way above what we ever thought it would be. You know, so I just want to let you know, thank you to everybody on behalf of our family, and especially Eric and Todd and, and Little Weston. Keep following his page and see how much better he's doing, and, and just, uh, again, thank you from our family. We love you all. Thank you.